So, who are you and what do you do? I'm Chris Wanstroth. I'm one of the co-founders of GitHub, and I work at GitHub. And uh, where are we today? We are at, where are we? <laughs> Ames Research Center, a NASA thing, right in front of, uh, it's not Hangar 18, but I wish it was, a giant hangar filled with poison. <laughs> yeah, the asbestos in the uh, dirigible hangar, I yes. believe. And uh, you just gotten off uh, um, the stage here at the conference center talking about open source at NASA. Um, what have you seen here over the past uh, 24 hours or so in terms of uh, where open source is at the uh, space agency? Um, it's a little bit chaotic, chaotic right now. Mm -hmm. There's definitely effort to participate in open source. There's a bunch of open source projects. They're kind of all over the place. It seems like each group within NASA is doing their own thing. And the idea here is to sort of get all that into some centralized either policy or process and get everyone on the same page and then start showing the community what NASA is doing. So there's one place you can go to find out anything from sort of vision, uh, working with large images, to controlling robots. And I've heard about them uh, consolidating their code on uh, nasa.gov. Uh, certainly there's a lot of NASA projects on uh, GitHub, but they're not consolidated quite yet. Um, are you all tracking the way that NASA code exists there and how people are using it? Somewhat. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're all personally interested in it just because it's really cool stuff. Yep. Uh, and we're always interested in what NASA is doing and so I think to an extent yeah that's why we're here but as far as sort of watching exactly what's going on uh, we all just do that because we're nerds <laughs> and that's not necessarily a bad thing at all um, what are some of the the nerd lessons for open source that you imparted this morning now how can NASA do this better as they go forward you know, so I guess this isn't surprising or it shouldn't be surprising, but we deal a lot at GitHub with collaboration and the development process, and it seems like the big thing here is a higher level than that, sort of licensing issues, processes, getting the sign-off to just even put your code out into the wild. Yeah. So we sort of deal in the wild, mm -hmm. and here they're just trying to get to that point. And um, when you deal with code in the wild, what are some of the challenges that you encounter? You, you made the uh, comparison to Wikipedia this morning in terms of structure, and, and you know there are crazy edit wars that break out there. Um, do you have those kind of community moderation issues at GitHub? Sure, there's always going to be flame wars. Uh, a lot of that takes place in comments, in, in code reviews, and things like that. But the main difference between, one of the main differences between GitHub and Wikipedia is no one can change your code on GitHub without your permission. They just make a copy and then request that you pull it in, something like that. Whereas on Wikipedia, we can both be editing the same article at the same time, and that can lead to problems. So there's, a, there's definitely a gatekeeper on GitHub, and that's sort of up to you to decide if it's just yourself, if it's your entire organization, if it's you and your friends, or whomever. Now, GitHub's been around for a couple years now. What are some of the things you would do differently if you're creating an open source repository? Some of the things I would do differently if I was creating it. You know, I think we're always trying to improve GitHub, so we're uh -huh. trying to do those things right now. And when we started, GitHub was about hosting open source code, and that turns out to be the easy problem. The mm. hard problem is making people work better together. So we're all about improving collaboration. And that's really what I wish we'd focused on earlier, but we're doing our best to make it as great as possible. Any specific steps on how to improve collaboration, then? For us, anyone watching the GitHub blog, anyone following GitHub's development knows right now we're doing a lot around making emails more pleasant to work with, um, making pull requests better. So whatever your workflow is, if you like to do everything in your email, if you like to do stuff on the website, we want to make GitHub a pleasant experience for you and just make it work, really. Yep, and I, I saw some uh, GitHub users pop into the live stream today, and, and uh, clearly we're very curious about what happens next. You know, what's the mm -hmm. future? And you mentioned mobile. But that's, uh, I didn't mention mobile. Oh, you, you didn't mention mobile? The Internet mobile. mentioned mobile. The internet mentioned mobile, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we, we are just trying to make it as, as good as possible. There's uh, a lot of things we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of cool projects that haven't yet been announced yet. But I think that this year is going to be really big for us and really big for our users. Okay, so let's uh, bring it back to the government. Um, yeah, GitHub is a very interesting place, and certain people who want to learn more about it can go and find out for all the ways you've uh, mentioned, it, whether it's the blog or following you on Twitter. Uh, I think you're defunct there, as I, as I recall, and which means your account actually exists now that it's gone. Um, what are some of the, the principles around um, creating and sharing code that government doesn't do well, and what could they do better? I think a lot of it is communication. Some people hear success stories either on Google Code or GitHub about, oh, there's so many more contributions after it's been moved to GitHub and, and whatnot, and they expect that they can just put a piece of code that's brand new and open source on GitHub and then suddenly have this, this flood of people just, just collaborating and contributing and that sort of thing. But a lot of it is about communication with the community. Mm. You know, getting a central presence at NASA where they can advertise, you know, these are open source projects, these are our new open source projects, make it a place where people go, uh, some, it's something on Twitter, mm -hmm. just communicating to people and building a community and then sort of driving that community to GitHub or to wherever the code's hosted. But it, the community's not going to create itself. You need to have people who want to have this succeed and are working to help make sure that people who are interested can find what they need really easily. And, uh, you know, sometimes people call that kind of work 
work uh, developer evangelism. Is, is that about, about right? It's all marketing. It's all marketing. So if you want people to use your, your software, use your product, you've got to market it. You have to be either a good maintainer is a big part of it, you know, being active with the community. If someone gives you a contribution, you have to be there saying, you know, this is good, but we want it to be this other way, or can you fix this, or can you sign this thing first? Yes, Humans have to be involved. It takes a lot of human involvement. So sometimes that's, that's, a, that's a big challenge, right? You're thinking about uh, literally a, a global organization trying to reach out to a global community of geeks. Um, what are the best ways to you know, find the open source community and to really be a good member of it? I think it's to put the geeks in charge. The people at NASA <laughs> who are working on this code, who are involved in the open source code, the actual people developing it, controlling the project, maintaining it, give them the power. Let them make the blog post announcing it. Let them tweet it and find out you know, who's interested. And let them work directly with people in the open source community who are interested. And have them here giving talks, which they are. And it's right. going really well, I think. So that, that really, really means uh, loosen up the rules of engagement a little bit in terms of online. I think so. Yeah, yeah, if you want open source to succeed, you've got to play by the rules of open source, which are, uh, ironically, not that many rules. <laughs> oh, well, one is certainly being um, more open in communication, as you described. Mm -hmm. More uh, open is always better. So as you look back at the, the past 24 uh, hours or so here, um, what have you learned that you didn't know before? NASA has an open source license. Um, people here are, it's kind of old and dated, and so one of the big pushes is to get that changed, and I think it sounds great based on what I've learned. And I think a lot of people here are trying to figure out what they can do to help. And it's interesting because there's lawyers, there's developers, there's marketing people, there's managers. And it's interesting to see so many different people with so many different skill sets come together for one common cause. And I hope something good comes out of it. Well, we'll see what happens next. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thank you.